Well, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Turn to Luke chapter 2, if you have your Bible with you, verses 25 to 32. And you will see this is a familiar passage and, and more familiar as the weeks go up to Christmas. Although that's not why I'm reading this passage. So Luke 2, 25 to 32. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the Christ Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the time, of the law, sorry, he took him up in his arms and, and blessed him and said, Lord, now, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples. A light to lighten the Gentiles, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. I guess none of us likes waiting if you regard an event to be promised or seriously overdue. And that would be the case while we pray for revival in our land, it's desperately due. But we can take courage. If the Lord graciously answers our prayers, then we will give him the glory. That itself is a mystery, how our God graciously turns to our prayers. If we don't seem to see anything in our lifetime, then God is sovereign. Uh, and perhaps the next generation will see a major revival in the church and an awakening in our country. Uh, they will see the glory of God in Christ. Because revival awakening is the glory of Christ in the gospel. Uh, I'll tell you the Apostle Paul's example anyway. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. Well, so also the UK. And no, Paul had a heart for lost souls. It is his heart's desire to see souls saved as well as to see uh, the glory of God. Now, before I concentrate a little on Simeon in Luke 2, there are many well-known verses in the Old Testament urging us to wait for the Lord, because that really is the theme. And the Lord promises great blessings when we wait on the Lord, even if we don't seem to have or receive from the Lord what we are hoping and expecting. Psalm 27, 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And that, that verse assumes that all of us feel weak from time to time and that's a good thing in a way to feel weak in our soul or in, in our mind or even body but the spiritual answer of course the, the only remedy is from the Lord by his word and by his spirit and I'm sure all of us can remember a time when we were particularly strengthened I certainly have felt such. Psalm 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and the Lord inclined to me. That's a lovely phrase. The Lord inclined, he tended towards me. It's a personal drawing of God to David, which he felt, and he heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, 
out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock. And at the end of that chapter, Psalm 40, verse 31, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They, sh they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What a blessing these verses and others have been to us, even this morning as I've read them. I trust they are of great comfort and strengthening to you. Now, Simeon. Simeon had to wait for the Lord, as we read in Luke 2.25. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Now, then, then you're tempted to analyse that and tempted to say, now, what is that? Um, and uh, the answer comes in the same context. God had revealed to him that he wouldn't die until the Lord's Christ came. So the consol consolation of Israel is the Lord Jesus himself. And Simeon was expectant of the promise he received. Uh, when, when Simeon waited for God, he also waited on God. And I suppose this is one of the main points of what I want to say. We don't sit around waiting for God to move and assume it's like when when people expecting the Lord to come in the second coming and you read stories about them going off into some remote place and waiting for the Lord. No, no. One of the main points I want to make is that while Simeon waited for God, he also waited on God in the sense of serving. He kept serving God didn't wait, didn't stop, just doing what he normally did for the Lord. He remained doing what he was qualified and able to do in the temple, namely to officiate for the infant Jesus, according to the custom of the law. And in doing so, he saw the glory of God in the person and the humanity of Jesus. And we can't recreate that and we can't explain, we can't even describe how he saw the Lord Jesus himself. It's beyond, beyond thought for us. But yes, he saw the child Jesus. He saw the glory of God in the person and the humanity of Jesus when he was brought into the temple. And Simeon is it, certainly a challenge to us as we yearn and pray for revival uh, in the midst of an increasingly godless nation. I was saying to Willie right at the start before we started, I like to turn the news on just to get the headlines, uh, get up to date and possibly pray about what's going on. And uh, it really was horrendous for the first part of it I can't really explain to you uh, it's probably best not to mention and it just revealed that we're an increasingly godless nation I had to turn the TV off for a minute or two to get past that bit now what do we learn from Simeon well that we should be just and devout that's obvious isn't it the very opposite of the world around us I don't mean goody goody I don't mean rather stuck up in our spirituality. No, no, that we should be just and devout, the, the very opposite of the world around us. Um, maybe we feel we don't get a lot of uh, contacts with the world. And I think that's one thing we can pray about, that uh, the Lord thrusts us into a situation where we can be a witness because... Perhaps we of the older generation in the main, not all, just don't contact non-Christians very often. Secondly, that we'd be full of the Holy Spirit, almost ironically. Of course, we must be full of the Holy Spirit in a different way from 
talk about the Holy Spirit in terms of uh, revival. But the Apostle Paul urges us to be full of the Holy Spirit, something incumbent upon us. Ephesians 5.18 is, is the text for that. And then, and then Simeon shows us that keeping serving the Lord is a keen and a good, marvellous thing to do in our circumstances, whatever, whatever is our circumstances that God has granted uh, uh, us. So waiting on the Lord, i.e. serving him, while we wait for the Lord to bring revival. And when the Lord Jesus came, Simeon saw the glory of God in Jesus. 33 years later from Simeon, we have the day of Pentecost. And again, there is a period of waiting. Our Lord had descended into heaven. The promise of the Father was, uh, was the coming of the Holy Spirit, which, said Jesus, which you have heard from me. When was that? Well, our Lord's last words in the book of Luke, just before his ascension, Luke 24, 49, reads, Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry wait in the city of jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high power for what it's not just power for signs not at all power for what power to preach jesus when peter preached three thousand were saved Peter, and we know he had a lot to learn yet, and yet empowered by the Holy Spirit, 3,000 were saved. Thus, Pentecost is as much about the glory of the cross of Christ, resurrection and ascension and salvation as a salvation story, with so many being saved with that wonderful message. message the Pen Pentecost, sorry, Pentecost is as much about that, the whole story, than it is about the power to preach it and the signs which came. So the Christians at that time, in that marvellous start revival, when the Holy Spirit came upon the church in a particular way to in which we all enter when we're converted, the Christians saw the glory of God in Christ in a different way from Simeon, but both saw the glory of God in Christ. And, and that will happen too in the second coming. And will, when we, uh, when we receive revival, which we trust we will in our, in our lifetime, we shall be looking at Christ in his glory as he uh, blesses the church and affects the world. So, there, there is great reward in itself in waiting to see the glory of Christ, to strengthen us, to give us patience, to increasingly conform us to the person and the purity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, let us wait for the Lord and continue wait, to wait upon him serve him in our lives uh, and to God be the glory, to Jesus be the glory. Let's pray.